we're going to talk about now is, is building a hierarchical metapopulation model, okay? Um, and um, this is something that I think is a really attractive, nifty feature of any logic. It's just one of those things where you have a sense that, um, you know, they, they've kind of nailed how it can be done quite easily. Um, and uh, what I'm going to show you is a two-level model. So it's, it's a model with, with people and with cities. Um, and uh, it's quite easy. I can't remember what's in the scope of the model. To have people migrate between cities and stuff like that. What um, what you have to realize is that this is a it's just one um, truncation for for didactic purposes. It's, it's it's quite easy to put in an arbitrary number of hierarchies, level of hierarchies, and and that's very powerful. The technique generalizes uh, quite directly. Um, something that we're not doing here is also showing how you can do statistics at multiple levels. But suffice it to say that you can embed statistics in agents just as, you know, you could have, you can have populations within agents. Um, so you can have cities and they have populations of people and you, those populations within a city can have statistics associated with them that are then at the city level and then you can have statistics at the overall level. Okay, so frequently there's a need to capture multi-level hierarchies um, and, and these may be you know, patients, wards, hospitals, uh, regions, or it may be um, you know, children and schools and neighborhoods, municipalities, regions, etc. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, some quite nice statistical techniques um, uh, associated with structural equation model, mixed effects models, um, and um, hierarchical linear models have come out for, for, for analyzing um, these things. And they, and they capture regularities at different levels of scale. Um, uh, and, you know, we, we will uh, sometimes have, an, at different levels of these hierarchies, very different characteristics structurally and dynamically. So, for example, municipalities may be arranged in transportation networks that are largely distance-based, um, and people may exhibit contact patterns within a given municipality that may have a very different network structure, and then people may move between municipalities, for example. Um, so I've, I've tried to emphasize that any logic, by virtue of its, of its design, it, it, it really um, helps support flexibility with respect to using these components out of which we've been building models. So state charts can be placed, for example, in Maine. Populations of agents can be placed in agents. Just because we see commonly Maine having a population, it doesn't mean that only Maine can have populations in it. No, populations can live in agents. Um, and things you normally see at an agent level, state charts and maybe parameters, and maybe um, you know stocks and flows or what have you, those can be moved done in Maine. Uh, it's, it's extremely flexible in that regard. Um, so we can create these structural hierarchies in any logic to parallel hierarchies in the world. And I argued in my first lecture or two that this is not a trivial thing. Actually, having a model structure which mirrors the world lets you very easily apply statistics and compare those statistics from the model with statistics from the world, and it's just easier to think about. You can first explore down from here to the city level, sort of see what's going on, and then explore below the city. And it's, it's a very natural decomposition. Okay. Um, so um, what I'd like you to do is to load in a model called Minimalist Network ABM model, okay? Um, and... Uh, that, that's, that's an example not provided by any logic. It's an example, um, uh, it's an example provided um, as part of the, um, the, the uh, many examples we've provided you. Um, so tutorials, example models, and um, network, um, this is called minimalist network ABM model. Minimalist network ABM model. Okay, here we go. Boom. Um, okay. So it's it's loading it in. Okay. Um, okay. So um, I would like to suggest once you've loaded it in that you do a file save as to your folder. So that would go to C ABM Bootcamp 2012. Um, ABM Bootcamp 2012, um, 
and and call it a uh, hierarchical city population model hierarchical city population model okay so so all I did is load it in and I did save as okay and you should save it to a hierarchical city population model on your C ABM bootcamp so this is so it will run faster okay it'll run it'll run more quickly okay okay and then you say finish here and and it will just save it away okay okay anyone need a TA TA okay okay um, so what we're gonna have is main the root containing a population of cities and cities containing a population of person. Oh, folks, can I show you one other place where root occurs? Just, just so I don't forget. It sometimes confuses people. Um, if you go down to the experiment, you'll notice it says main active object and in parentheses root. Sometimes you'll have to select this. If you copy and paste a simulation, so, so watch this. This is, a, this is a thing that you then discovered one time and I discovered it and she saved me. Um, in front of the class. Um, okay, so you do copy and, uh, and you do paste here. And you'll notice when you paste it, there's an error message next to it. And it actually says root active object class is not specified. I don't think it said that in the old version. I would have figured it out. And so when you paste it like that, you have to go down and select main as the root. Okay? So, so just sometimes if you're copying and pasting, um, pasting scenarios, experiments in other words, you will have to know that this is root. Okay, so, but this model will contain, a main will contain a population of cities and city will contain a population indeed of persons. Okay, and um, these two will be arranged in different sorts of networks. Okay, um, so what I'd like you to do is you should have something like this, hierarchical city population model, you should have main and person and, um, and well, if you have more than one simulation, that's fine. Um, okay. So let's go, let's go look at this. So I'd like you to copy the person class, okay? Copy person. This is just to sort of ease the, the amount of work required. Um, and I'd like you to do uh, paste, because we already have um, some things defined for that already. Copy person, and then we'll select the model and do paste, okay? And um, we are going to have person one there, and we're going to rename person one as city. Okay, why are we doing this? Because we already have a visual representation of it, and we won't have to go through some steps just setting that up. Um, maybe it'll be good in some ways to rehearse that, but we'll just say city. Okay, um, so so we we just copied and pasted that, and that, that's kind of a useful technique to actually know about. So now this is a city. Um, and that's also a person. I mean, that's also an agent. You'll notice that both of them have this Da Vincian symbol indicating um, that they're both agents, okay? Um, and now I'd like you to, to up open main, double click main, okay? And click on population. And I'd like you actually to delete it. Delete that population, okay? Okay, boom, gone. Okay, now I'd like you to drag in from city. And so we're adding a population of city agents. And this should be called, what do I call this? Um, uh, I call it cities, okay? I call it cities, okay? By the way, that, that thing of, of renaming, copying person, renaming it, it just to spare us a little bit of effort setting up the visual representation adding a new agent, adding a new active object class, selecting as an agent, adding visual representations of it, having that whole thing about dx, dy, remember that? I just don't want to have to go through that again. And I don't think you want to have to go through it again. So I just copied it, okay? Okay, so we're calling this cities instead. Cities, okay? And um, uh, this is cities. And, and then I'd like you, because it's a population, I'd like you to say replicated and we should have 10 of them, okay? 10 cities, hmm? Who needs help? Who needs TA help? Besides me. 
Okay. No one else? Okay. Um, TA help? No? Okay. Okay, so what did I do? I, all I did is I went to Maine. I deleted the person's population. I dragged in city. I named it cities. I went down and replicated. I said it's replicated with an initial number of objects, town. In other words, I've made the size of the city population town. It's a population now of, of, of cities, right? Okay. Um, okay, and more than that, I'd like you to set the environment there to be to be environment. One other thing I'll note here, folks. See this thing that says uh, create presentation? If you change the presentation of, of city now and you want it to be reflected here, you could do create presentation, okay? Um, uh, so like if you went back and want to change what cities look like. Um, okay, um, so that's good. So we have environment now, uh, the environment set to be environment, okay? The TA help needed? Or do you want me to slow down or repeat something? Yeah. When we, when we copy, rename the uh, person. The network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the Java, Java package, oh, yeah. Um, well, it would be important if you if you try to load two of them at the same time. It will complain. So it, it might be a nice thing to be able to rename that. So what Brian was asking about is if you click up here on the whole population, there's a package. And you'll notice there's kind of a mismatch right now. This is hierarchical city population model. This is um, uh, minimalist network ABM model. And actually, this will matter. If, if you try to load both models at the same time, it will say, ah, ah I'm stuck. Um, it won't say it in quite those words, but it will, it will not let you load it. And so it would be better to say hierarchical city population model. By convention, these are all lowercase in Java with no underbars. Um, I personally find that aesthetically displeasing, but but not a hue to it. Okay, um, so in short, folks, this whole package thing, basically the package tells it sort of what name to use for the things within this model. And if we use the same name, we retain the same name, it will it will sometimes cause clashes if we had both models um, loaded. Okay, so um, so is there any question on what I've done so far? Does anyone want me to clarify a point here? Anyone want me to clarify anything? Okay. Um, okay, so, so there's some cities. Okay, now in the advanced tab in properties for environment, make the network type distance base and the connection range 250, okay? So this is just setting it up so cities get connected together and so on. So, so in environment, this is within main, I'd like you to go, uh, the network type should be distance based and the connection range should be 250, 250, okay? So, so distance based this and this is, here we're selecting environment. Okay. Okay. Uh, layout type, uh, just leave it as user defined. Okay. It's just going to splay them down randomly. You, you could alternatively choose random. There, I think that defaults to, to that if, if you don't override it. Okay. Um, are people all set with that? Okay. Um, okay. Now I'd like you. Okay. So so what we've just set up is is sort of the high level. And um, what the heck? Let's 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 just run it now, just to see what happens. Run early, run often. Just try to try to make sure that that no bugs have crept in early, because if they creep in, you don't know where they um, where they crept in. Um, so so what do we see now? We see a population of cities, and if we scroll down, we'll see cities here, right? And each city is in a network. Okay, so that's not much different than what we've done thus far, right? This is kind of similar to what we did before with people, right? We just happen to call them cities right now. But, but now, ladies and gentlemen, the plot will thicken. Okay? Um, okay. So, um, okay, do people, do people need TA help? Okay, TA help. Um, okay, three TAs uh, require deployment. 
four TAs. Um, How do you back out of that view? Um, oh, okay. So what I did was, um, okay, multi-deployment now. Um, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dylan. Okay, so so all I did is I went down to cities here, and then in, how did I get back up? I did I use this to, to navigate back up. Folks, um, when you're viewing this, you can view individual cities, um, just like you could view people before, and then you can pop back up to this next higher level. Okay. 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 Who else needs help here? I, 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 an instructor will deploy. Um, as needed. Does anyone want? Okay. Um, So, so thus far, we really haven't done anything different other than we using the name cities for instead of persons. Um, but, but now the plot thickens. Okay. So, what I'd like to do is go open up city. Double click on city now. Okay. So now we're dealing with city, and and now we're going to add a municipal population by adding people to the city. How do we add a population of people to a city? Can anyone tell me? This is a familiar routine in another context. How do we add a population to a city? What do we do? We drag from person over here. We just put it there, and we're going to have it replicated, right? And we're going to actually set up an environment for them, OK? So, um, so we're going to drag from person over to city, OK? And um, One interesting question. I've never dragged city to city. That would be an <laughs> <laughs> OK, yeah, so exactly. Could you have a recursion? And, right. and um, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> OK, OK, OK. Is your template Good. for all the other agents you want to create? Um, uh, well, yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be. It's just that uh, that it's sort of, I, I did that for, for simplicity's sake. Um, but well, you have a template agent, and then you can copy it and rename it. If you sure. Know, yeah, yeah. And, and then I don't have to define this DX, DY right, thing right, for yeah. their networks and all that sort of nonsense. Um, um, really, that's the worst thing about it. Um, OK, so folks, I dragged person over here. I, I named it city population, and I made it replicated. And, and then I'd like to draw that uh, population. Um, folks, we're here in Saskatchewan, and, and um, we're going to be modeling the, some of the smaller municipalities of Saskatchewan. So, so the, the number of agents within a city, number of persons within a city, is going to be uniformly drawn from um, 10 to 200. Okay, So, so, so we, we have uh, small municipalities. and. Um, some of them quite thriving, and and uh, we'll we'll have uniform draw between ten and two hundred. Um, excuse me, uniform discrete, discrete, because um, because we're drawing it from we're drawing integers. We want zero, one, two. We don't want half a person. Um, okay, so uniform discrete between ten and two hundred. Okay. You bet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This can be any expression. So it can be a function call saying, "Get me this data from the database," you know, or "Get this from a query um, for this particular city number," and it would suck it in from the database. Or it could look it up in a table and put it in the database. Those would be a good thing. Um, okay. 
so, so uniform discrete. So this is the city population replicated uniform discrete. Okay. Um, pardon me as I just correct my slides um, uh, so that so that other others don't don't get that see that it's uniform. Okay. So so I just want to do a screenshot. Boom. Um, come on. Okay. There we go. Um, okay. Um, there we go. And uh, oops. Oops. And oh, oh, sorry. Um, oh, boy. Um, and then we want to drag this. Okay. Um, so that's the city population, and um, and then what we want to do is um, we want to set an environment. So we want to drag in an environment because to to live in a network, people need an environment to define that network. Well, okay, that's. Technically not true. It's just it's convenient to have an environment. You could have uh, people connected in a network of your own design, where each person maintains the number of people in this network or that one. You could do it on your own. It's just any logic provides an environment to help you if you see fit. So here it's going to be called city environment. Could call it municipal environment. Um, and um, and uh, we call the city environment. So we dragged it in. And then what do I'd like you to do is to go to the advanced tab and I'd like you to set the um, width and the height to be 75 and I'd like you to set it to be a scale free network, okay? Um, so advanced uh, width, uh, the width and the height instead of being 500 should be 75, 75, okay? And um, it should be a, a scale-free network. Wh what is? What am I doing here? Like, what? Why am I doing this? Yeah, it keeps it close to the city, so they're distributed in space, just in the smaller area, rather than all over the screen. And then a uh, scale-free network is imposing a network structure on those people in the city. Does that make sense? This is. And what do we finally have to do? Okay, so we've defined this this re replicated population. Um, we've defined the city environment. What do we have to do finally? Yeah, exactly. We have to tell the city population to live in the environment. So we have to go back here where it says environment for this population. We have to say city environment. Okay, who needs TA help? TA help? Hmm? Okay. Okay. Um, any help needed? No? Sorry? Oh, I did. Uh, for the city population, you have the environment be city environment. Yeah. So it, 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 it depends on the environment. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so should we run this thing? You want to run it? Okay, so 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 let's run this, uh, and and there we go. So so what are we seeing here, folks? Can anyone sort of characterize what's going on here? So so what are these buses? They're the cities, and within each city, what is this? Okay. So let's let's go navigate down. Let's go up here, folks. Remember this menu where you can navigate down? So pull this down, and now you'll see there's cities and populations within cities. So let's pull down cities, and here's city one, here's city two, here's city three, here's city four. What are these connections going out from here in this kind of uh, sharp, pointy way? What are these things? Yeah, those are the connections to other cities, right? Um, if you were to pop up a level, see this thing here? I should have emphasized this. View owner of this object. We say main owns the city. So, so you pop up a level, pop down a level to the city level, pop down to the city population level. Now we're seeing the population within this certain first city, OK? Um, uh, we could see the different people. Who are they connected with? To whom is the person within the city connected? To people in that same city, right? Um, 
that's that's their neighbors within that city because each city owns its own what? Each city has its own population and environment, and so they're each in this kind of network that's confined to their cities, right? Um, okay. Um, so um, that's kind of uh, kind of interesting, but let's um, let's let's sort of change the relative size here. So so let me ask what this is actually to, to sort of mo motivate this a little bit. Um, let's go up a level and let's go up a level yet. What is this thing here? What is this thing at the nexus? What is this? Those are actually the cities. Those are, those are actually the cities themselves. The, the, um, the population within the city is kind of, a, it looks kind of the same as the city representation. And that just doesn't seem right. So let's give the city its own, um, its own you know, appearance, okay? So I'd like you to double click on city here. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I'd like you to go up and select the oval. Okay, um, Okay. now this is interesting. There's, this selects this whole thing. Why is that selected? Why is that whole thing selected? What is that? Yeah, it's the representation of actually the people within the city. If we drag that over, we'd see the city looks just, just like it. I just dragged this out of the way. And here's the city b sort of representation behind it. Um, so, so let's drag it to enlarge it and then recenter it on the origin. So we're going we're gonna to drag this guy to enlarge this. Whoops. Drag this oval to enlarge it. And then we're going to recenter it on the origin. And, and we can put this guy, we should put this guy back so he's centered on the origin, at least roughly, okay? Um, yeah. Um, does anyone need TA help for that? Okay. Okay, now if, if we run this model now, probably need some further adjustment, but you'll start to get get some sense. Okay, so so they're not quite centered on it. Okay, um, so now move the origin for placing people to the upper left of the city. The reason is because people are only placed relative to this, to the right and downwards. So let's move this up, up to the upper left corner of this thing. So it starts sort of here, okay? And then let's, let's kind of measure how, how big is this? This is radius 50, okay? So it's 100 across, and it's sort of 75 width. I think that roughly should, should, should work okay, but let's, let's give it a shot, okay? So now let's, let's run this thing um, and, and run it. And well, let's, that's not bad, eh? Does anyone need TA help? You get something like this? Okay, okay. Um, so now again, we have cities, and each city has its population. And there's, there's 10 of them, okay. Um, okay, so that's, that's kind of nifty. Um, okay, now, um, now let's 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 just let, uh, let's let's add a statistic, okay? Um, so so I'd like to to add a statistic here, and I'm gonna actually um, add this. So you know, add a statistic um, at the city level. Um, so maybe at the city level. So if we wanted within a city to compute a statistic on the city population, how would we do it? If we wanted a city. A, a, a population, a statistic of the city population, what would we do here? City population, and then click add statistics, right? Um, so we, we could do this. Um, and I mean, the most trivial st statistic of all is just, you know, the count of people in the city, count the number that, you know, for which it's true. Obviously, if, if people had parameters, we could, we could do more, 
Um, yeah. City. Uh huh. Sure. Uh, you mean sort of here, visually? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I understand that we're trying to get the simulation of the city to be the um, center over. Yeah, that's right. So, like, why is this up here, you're yeah, saying, yeah. as opposed to? Well, okay, so. And why do you need both on the same? Because we have the person defined on the, the population defined on the other person. We have that sort of defined. Yeah. 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 So, so, so this relates to your question on the first day, okay? So, what is the significance of this thing? So that's the thing to merge into the space. That, 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 defines the origin. that defines the origin with which these agents are 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 within this population are are, are displayed. These these agents here are persons, right? They're 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 persons, um, and. They're going to be displayed relative to this place. So, so they're all at, at positive uh, x and y locations. So they're going to be displayed sort of somewhere along here to here. It's going to be a, sort of a, a rectangle of width 75, 75 down, 75 over, 75 down. They're going to be placed. I dragged them up here because if, if they started to be displayed here, I figured they'll fall into the circle roughly here, fall into the circle roughly here. and so when they're scattered around within that width of 75 and height of 75, they'll fall within this little boundary. Where did that 75 come from? We set that. We set that within the city environment to be advanced 75 width, 75 height, okay? Um, and that was used to place the people. So they'll fall roughly within this boundary. Within the city boundary. Yeah. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a visual thing, but you know, um, we could also draw um, draw a city population as a uh, rectangle, right? Um, and um, maybe that would be maybe that would be nicer. Um, so, so suppose we did want to draw this as a rectangle. Um, uh, we could drag this, take this out, boom, right? And we could drag it as a rectangle over from presentation um, if we wanted to do this. We could have a rectangle here and drag a rectangle up mm, and um, maybe put it up like this and put it up like that. Now, right now it's standing in front of it. We're going to do order send to back. Mm, and, um, and this guy is still in the middle of it, which is, um, which is fine, but we actually want him to... Um, I, I think that's fine. Um, so, so we're gonna now have a square population of cities, um, and and they're gonna be connected up. Does that make sense to people? Okay. So now we have, have different cities. Um, now, obviously, we could take this thing in many, many different ways. Um, one way we could take it is by computing statistics. Um, so we we did this just a minute ago by adding a statistic. So within this population, we went to statistics and we added a statistic to count the number that were, were true. Let's suppose we wanted to, um, per the spiral approach to learning, suppose we wanted now, and forgive me if I'm beating this dead horse too much, suppose we wanted to have a heterogeneous population um, that has different incomes within a city, but different cities have different sort of general income levels between them. How would we do that? So suppose we wanted our cities to differ in terms of their mean income level, and maybe in terms of their variability in income. Maybe we code it as, you know, sort of the, the view and the sigma of the log normal distribution. Each city to have its own. And then um, uh, one 
houses are assigned to the city's population, it's drawn, has their income drawn from a lot of normal distribution with those parameters. How do we do that? Parameters associated with with what? With cities and with income per person. Okay. So so let's let's do that. Right? Okay, so let's go to city, double click on city. Let's drag over a parameter, okay? And this will be income mu. I could probably call it, you know, income log normal mu, income, income log normal sigma. Um, but I'll call it income mu, income sigma. Um, and those are both doubles, okay? Double precision values, they're real values. 3.5, 2.6, or what have you. And each city was going to have its own distinct one. So we're going to have cities with different socioeconomic characteristics overall. Okay, so that's step one. Now each person is going to have what? Is going to have an, an income, a particular income. Yeah, and it's going to be a value of that income. Okay, so now we have, we went to person, opened person, and we dragged income into person. Okay, so how are we going to set the person's income? Where do we, where do we define the, 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 the source of a person's income? It's where? It's in a city because it's the population in which that person lives, and that lives in a city. So let's go up to city. And for the city population, what should the formula be? Okay. Well, let's do it log normal. We 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 did it, um, we did it like like this. Um, so pardon me as I just uh, copy this for for your own later perusal. Um, so uh, we want to do an insert of a screenshot. Boom. Um, Okay, so, so within city, we, we want to have a city population and we want to get a general tab and uh, its income will be what? Its income will be distributed according to a log normal distribution with income with mu being what? Income mu and sigma being income sigma and a minimum of zero, okay? Well, we don't really need the minimum. I mean, that's, that's, it's not gonna be below that anyway, but, but it forces us to, to say that, okay? So, 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 so here, what, what did we do, big picture? We just added a parameter to lend heterogeneity and income to the person we added to the city distinctive distributional parameters associated with its, its income distribution. And we use those to, to, to draw different values for different people within that population, right? Okay, and, um, and uh, finally, we, um, within uh, Maine are going to have to do what? What are we going to have to do within Maine? Okay. Because remember, city has two parameters. Who has to specify those parameters? Maine. Particularly the, the, the population in Maine. Okay. So now we have to define parameter, we have to find distributions associated with income U and income sigma. Um, and I, I'm just going to make those uniform distributions between, say, zero and, um, or say, you know, uh, say, uh, uh, four and, and ten or something like that. Um, and, well, that's a pretty broad range, four and, four and, and eight. Um, so we're going to have everything from Abu Dhabi to, to uh, sort of, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, a, 
a, a poor um, poor region in, in um, rural uh, rural Alabama or Mississippi um, okay so uh, okay so so here what we've done is we specified a distribution for cities for the mean and the and the the log mean, the log sigma, uh, log standard deviation associated with the log normal distribution. And now we have within each city a distribution for the people within that city. And um, let's, let, let's, oh, uh, yeah, let's, sorry. Um, yeah, sure. Okay, fine. I mean, I didn't have to give the same distribution for, from U and sigma, but, um, but I did. Okay, so now what we have is a, you can go down to cities and and this one has, well, it's kind of in the way, isn't it? But um, we have an income U of 5.64 and an income, um, an income, sorry, 6.9 and, and a sigma of 5.64. And if we went and I, we looked at that population, that population has certain distribution of income. Wow, here's one with a $1,600,000, uh, <laughs> you know, abutting someone with $121. So, <laughs> that, that's a, a fair disparity. Um, here's one, 156,000. Here's one with 6.378 times 10 to the minus 5. <laughs> so, you know, um, uh, words hardly describe it. Um, okay, so, so that's, that's interesting. Um, so we set the characteristics. Now, suppose we want to compute a statistic on the mean income for a given, for a given uh, municipality um, or the max and the minimum income for a municipality. How do we do that? So suppose we want to determine the average, the max, and the min income for each city. Okay, we go to city and we go to where in city? The we're, we're computing the max across the population, so we go to their population, and we're going to insert what to compute these statistics. So we go to the cities, we go to the statistics, we do add statistics, and we do average. And here we're going to have you know mean income, right, and. This is just going to be what? What's my formula here? My formula is going to have to involve what? This this average is going to be taken of average expression for each successive person in this population in turn. It's going to be applying this to get a value for that person, and then it's going to it's going to compute their average of this. And what expression do I want to have here for to compute the average of their income? Item dot. Dot item dot <laughs> income. Okay? Item is a reference to the person we have to ask for their income. Mm -hmm. And under for what people do we want to do it? We want to do it for all. So the condition, you could say, oh, we want to only apply these to men or only apply these to women, but here we're applying it to everyone. So this condition is true. Okay? So that's the average. How do we want to do the maxing? Who can give me that formula? Max income. How do we wanted to do that? Okay, we do max. And what what uh, expression do we use? Same one. Yeah, max income. We do max, and we use this item dot income here. Okay. Why item? Because item names the. Person, yeah. So again, this is going through each person in the population and using this expression to figure out the value for that person in the population. Each person, it names item in turn. It said, how do you get this expression? Oh, their income is such and such. And that's when, oh, their income is such and such. And it's going to go through, get those values for each, take their average, or take the average. Not for statistics. It's, uh, it's always bad. In fact, if you hover over that little bulb, it will. Um, oh, I think. Okay, so there. Okay, so I think what I may know what you're thinking about. Um, 
So once we put something like this, I'm, I'm not going to mess this up for uh, because I want to keep it up there for people to copy. But Diana, I'm going to put up something that you may be thinking about. Um, so if I wanted to see the number of like, don't, don't do this because it doesn't apply to this model. But if I want to do like count infective, okay, I would have something like this. Uh, count the number of item dot state chart, the state chart name, which, which in our previous case was state chart, is state active. Uh, and then it was person dot infective was, was sort of the thing. And so there's this person here. But that was actually just saying, give me the, the value of the infective name sort of, uh, the, the infective state for, for, a per, for, for people, okay? So, but this is the actual reference to the actual person themselves, to, to each successive person in time. Does that, is that helpful? Okay. Okay, and how would I do a minimum? Min income. Okay, yeah, it's exactly the same way, uh, except we, we, we just do min here, right? Boom. Okay. Um, and then we have true here. What, what is this true? Why, why is that condition true? Who needs help? We all include everyone. We're not particular that it can only be applied to men or only applied to women or whatever. Okay? Okay. Um, you have to put something in there. Yeah, you have to put something in there. Okay. Um, okay. So, so, okay, so, so it's, 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 oh boy, look at that. Oh, look at that. Uh-oh. Okay, it says item cannot be, res income cannot be resulted. Do we have, we, did we not have item? Or did we not have income? Um, okay, oh, 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 wait a minute. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. I have done something incredibly silly. I'm sorry. Um, uh, forgive me. Um, oh, yo. Um, oh, okay. So, folks, I should have done this at the per at the city level, doing it on the persons in the city. I should not have done this at the main level, doing it on on cities. Sorry, folks. Um, uh, that that's my boo boo. Um, get rid of those. Um. Okay, uh, sorry. I, 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 in my mind, I was thinking the city was open, but it's not. Here's city population, sorry. My, my mistake. What lives in this population is people, and therefore we can do count, uh, or sorry, average of <laughs> item, dot, item dot income true. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> So, so once, um, so when I was an undergraduate, uh, we had this wonderful uh, instructor for, uh, for Greek and Roman history named uh, Harold Anton Thorvald um, Osterreiki or something. He was this kind of aristocratic uh, uh, Norwegian um, with this very, very sort of uh, uh, funny, austere demeanor, um, but with a really funny sense of humor. And he, um, he said one time he was uh, in the military and they were doing these marches around um, a, a drill field, you know, with all these soldiers with guns, sort of marching on this phalanx and mass, you know, 20 deep or whatever. And, he, and they're being led, I guess, by this drill sergeant who was leading them around this field. And they would have to go and they would, part of the drill was they would march and then they would do a sudden about, you know, right face and they would march. He said that one time he saw them march, and and th they didn't stop in time, so the entire column just like whammed into a wall. <laughs> so that's kind of what happened. <laughs> you know, I led you into a wall. Sorry about that. Um, uh, it's funny the memories that come up. Um, okay, so, um, okay, so so, well, at least this is rehearsed now. So. Um, so we want um, the mean mean income, right? We want the we want the um, uh, max income, max income, 
um, for max, and it's just item.income.true, right? Sorry, so again, this is in the city, the population associated with city. We want the min income, min income, and um, uh, and then we want the um, so item dot income, and and that's all we'll we'll do here. Okay, um, we could have total income, but I don't I don't think we want that. Okay, so here's mean, max, min, right? Hmm? It's too bad they don't have standard deviation, but you could calculate it. Uh, you could calculate variance from that formula involving the square of the 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 average of the square and then the uh, square of the average and use that to derive the, the variance if you really wanted to. Okay, so um, so anyway, he, here you have this. Um, d does anyone want this to remain on the screen longer? Do you, you kind of got that? So this is applying to all people in the population and for each person in turn, it's taking their income and it's taking the max over that or the min. Does that make sense? Okay, so now suppose we want to go to the main level and suppose we wanted mm, suppose we wanted to have a statistic here on the mean of the city incomes. How do we do that? Riddle me that. Okay, but okay, yes, it would be actually quite similar in that regard, Steve. Um, so let's do um, mean income across cities, um, and we want to do an average. But what is the <laughs> what it, what is the uh, what is the formula we put in here? That is the rub. Um, what's what what's the formula here? Sorry. Okay, item first, and then, and then, okay, dot, okay, um, actually, you want item, okay, this, by the way, is any logic bug, it can't, it can't com complete this, so, item dot city population dot mean income, remember, you can, you can call this as a method, this is a statistic, so you can actually ask for this, now, whether it will allow this, so I, um, I, let, let's just see if if it uh, if something is needed. I may be misspelling it because I can't double check it. Yep, it, it works fine. Okay. So what am I doing? Yeah. I'm each, yeah. Each of these in turn is giving item being for the first city, taking the population of that city, and it's asking it to compute that statistic, right? And then for the next one, I see it to compute that statistic. Well, okay, so that was a population parameter you used to generate it, but it may be, it's true, you could use population mu, or the, the, the income mu, but not being a log of, of the, 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 um, the theoretical mean, but the actual empirical mean may differ from this, particularly if there's birth and death going on and so on, and, and sort of a population dynamics later. So, so this is actually checking the empirical mean, which may differ a little bit Oh yes, I did build it. Yep, yep. Oh, I'm sorry. So, 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 uh, so, Cheryl, that's very impressive. Um, so you were using build in a technical sense, and I miss. I was thinking you meant in a colloquial sense. Did it? Oh, yep, yeah, yeah. So it said build completed successfully. You notice there's a there's a kind of X up there, but sometimes any logic is going to allow you to do that. Um, okay, so here we're calling a statistic within the city population to secure the, the actual empirical mean income within the city. Does that make sense to people? That's only going to work, okay, uh, Dylan has a question here, that's only going to work, I would note, if you've already defined that statistic named mean income within the city population. Yeah. Oh, uh, TA help uh, needed? 
uh, more people need TAs? TA? 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 Okay. Building prepares it to run. Because you want to check if it's if if there's any problems in the specification. So building uh, does two basic things. First of all, it it um, turns it into an executable form if it can. But equally importantly, it checks to see if it's meaningful at at or to see if it's obviously not meaningful. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, so in other words, it looks for obvious errors, uh, obvious problems with it, um, things that are misstatements. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and you can build periodically just to see if you've introduced an obvious bug into it. Okay? Yeah. Um, okay, so folks, does that make sense? We defined a, uh, for the city population, within city, we defined a m um, mean income before. That's defined over what? If this is city population, that's a, that's a mean over what sort of thing? Over persons in that city. Now, that's that thing we provided in Maine in the city's calculation, this mean, this average here, sorry, this should be called um, mean um, income, and that's over what? Over cities. Yeah. So we're going successively to cities, we're asking for their mean income, and we're computing this. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, um, so if, if we were to run this thing now, um, we, should, we should now see associated with this, we could click on this and we have associated with the environment, um, well, okay, sorry, associated with the city population, here we go. So here's the mean income over cities. <laughs> well, okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so folks, now the 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 plot thickens yet further. Um, so the mean income. Um, <laughs> so uh, maybe this is Riyadh or something. Um, Can you do median? Uh, it doesn't provide that as a pre. It, it, you could do it manually, but it doesn't. It doesn't provide it as a built-in one. Well, it'd be really nice if it were modular. Okay, here, let's go down to the city level. Let's go see the variability in city mean population, okay? How do we get to that level? We navigate down from here to cities. And now let's look at this city population for city, city zero. Here's this population. The mean income for this is 1.5 1. 5 million. Um, <laughs> right, <laughs> so uh, not not quite that, but um, yeah, um, it's uh, you know uh, sixty three millionths of a cent. <laughs> so <laughs> so, um, so uh, here here we have city one, and the mean income here is um, is three hundred ninety six thousand. So that's that's a sort of uh, Poor man's, uh, poor man's city. Um, here's city three. The mean income is is forty five thousand. Okay. Um, now we're now we're talking familiar territory. How about city? Uh, okay, the, the fourth city, city number number three. Here's three hundred forty million. Okay. Um, here, this income is five hundred ninety nine thousand. This one is is seven million nine hundred million and eighty five um, eighty five thousand um, and then um, one hundred sixty nine. Okay, now that's uh, that's interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so what's the mean income of your city number one, city number two, city number three, where it's very close to the mean income? Well, well, let's see. Let's go click on simulation. It's a fixed seed. So, so let's do a random seed. 
Hmm? Let's let's do a random seed. Um, okay. Um, so now we have these nine cities, and um, and we want to um, we we want to uh, sc uh, scroll through um, scroll through them and uh, and in here. Sorry, go back down to the to the cities, and then we have uh, city one with a mean income of, of seven seven point nine million or seven point six million, and then one hundred ten thousand and one hundred. 113 million mean and, and 2.6 6 million and 1.133,000, etc. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Help? Help? Uh, uh, TA deploy? Um, prob probably, I, I'm not, y y y yes, from what I know about the libraries, absolutely, because these are collections and you could probably run, run um, a Java, the Java math libraries, you could probably just run it on any collection that could return a, a, a numeric value and probably would have been, I mean, just putting a little wrapper around it and just giving it to it, on the collection. Um, but. But um, I would then need to know a little bit more about the particular library involved to, to know. But yeah, it would be a simple task if you know Java pretty well. If you know Java pretty well, it would be a very simple task. In fact, quite a trivial task. But, but if, if you're still learning Java, it, it might actually might e be easier to do it yourself or something like that. Because wrapping it up in that way is not totally, uh, to totally obvious. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so folks, um, I, I have some code in my little example. Wow, I have a lot of, lot of stuff here. Um, oh, okay. Um, we could add names to cities if you want. Um, um, so I have people moving between city. I, I talk about how they can move between cities here. Um, they could bring illness, for example, from one city to another, or attitude, so they can move to be attracted to Riyadh from, from um, you know, a, a, a city of origin. Um, another thing we could readily do is, is add uh, names to cities. Maybe I'll show that just because it's sometimes a useful thing to do. What do you think? Okay. Sorry? Yeah. Migration between cities? S similar, um, you have to remove them from their source population, add them into a new population, then apply the network. Well, they, 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 they sort of you add, delete them from this city, add them to this other city. Um, actually, it's delete them from that city, add a person to this to this new city with their characteristics. Mm -hmm. So you could you could do that. Um, so now, and, and that's especially important for an infectious disease context or attitudinal context, but. You know, we, it could shape things. You could add name labels to cities. I, I suggest we, we could do this. So, so let's see this. This will, this will open some new doors for you. So what I'd like you to do is go to the city level. So double click on city, okay? Um, and, um, and then I'd like you to add a, a parameter called name, okay, name. And, um, and I'd like it to be a string, okay? because it would be a string of characters, okay? So I just added parameter, this is in city, add a parameter to that, and it'll be a string, okay? Okay, and, um, and then um, what I'd like to do is to um, add a text field, a label visually for the presentation for cities, okay? Um, so, um, uh, what we do is from the uh, palette under under uh, presentation, there's um, a thing that says uh, text. We drag this over there and put it uh, abutting the city. Okay, um, you see that? I just dragged from from presentation text over there. 
okay? Okay? Um, and, um, and then uh, we want to associate that so it has the name, the appropriate name. There's two ways to, to do it. Since it's not changing, we could just assign to it once when, this person, when the city is created, just assign to it. But um, just to keep it a little bit more declarative, what I'm going to do is set in the dynamic properties, this is going to depend on the name. Okay, so this dot name. So the text associated with this thing is going to be given by the name parameter. Okay? Okay? Um, and now we're going to have a, now we're going to have a, a array of names. Um, uh, and uh, this is going to be, um, hmm, we don't have to do it this way actually. There, there's a better way to do it or more, more visually intuitive way to, to do it. Um, okay, so, um, so uh, if you go down to, uh, ver uh, to uh, collection, okay. Um, oh, sorry, go up to main. So we're gonna go up main and, and drag a, a collection into there. Okay, and um, this will be, um, excuse me, this is actually a little bit more, yeah, yeah, let's, let's, let's not do it this way because uh, this way isn't quite as nice to initialize. Okay, so I'm gonna show you uh, a separate way to do it. So in main, go to advanced, okay, and then you see it says additional class code. We'll actually define a, a, an array here that we could just initialize. So it would be, um, this is how you write an array. Uh, this is actually one of two ways. Uh, city name, um, city names. And we're gonna give a bunch of names of cities. And they're gonna be 10 of them, okay? Um, 10 city names in Maine, okay? So the first will be Portland, okay? What other cities are in Maine? Bangor, thank you. How about others? Brunswick, right? Um, Brunswick. Uh, what others? Augusta, right? Okay. Um, who else knows cities in Maine? Um, uh, so Bar Harbor. Right, um, that's six. Another one, Booth Bay Harbor. That's seven. Another, Mount Desert Island. Okay, um, uh, is there a Belfast? Yeah. Okay, Belfast, Maine, okay, good. Okay, um, I think that's eight in, um, uh, Kitty, uh, no, uh, Kitty Bunkport is in Maine. Yes, that's right, that's right. Um, okay, uh, okay, uh, Kitty Bunkport. I, I reserve the, the ability to specify the last one. Kitty Bunkport. And the last one is going to be a cottage community named Moose Lake McGuntick. Um, McGuntick, um, which is, uh, it's just spelled with a moose and L A K E M E G U N T I C. Okay, it's like there's a moose and there's a lake there, <laughs> and there's a gun, <laughs> and he pulled the trigger, but it only went tick. Um, okay, so so it's true. There's, I know people who have traveled there, um, very favorably. So um, moose like McGuntick. Um, Okay, there should be 10 of these to label each of the cities. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, sorry. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, okay, if we actually wanted to check, we could actually put a, a, put a 10 in, these, in, these, um, in, in the size uh, over here. I think Java would check that for us and make sure we were are all, all in good shape. Um, ooh, look at that. Um, oh, no, no, it, Java doesn't allow that. I guess it's a C, C thing that it doesn't allow anymore. Um, okay, okay, so now we have the names of our cities. 
Um, and um, to use cities is to speak loosely. Um, uh, Muslik Mikantik isn't, isn't um, an urban land form. Um, uh, okay, so um, what we want to do now is, um, okay, how are we going to assign the city names? Um, so uh, where, right, um, so um, how are we going to um, give a, uh, a name to the cities? Um, we, we've specified the name in a parameter, right? Right? Um, so each city has a parameter, and that parameter is used to set the text for this. Um, but who provides a parameter to cities? OK, but who provides? So, so if we're in an object, who provides, who tells it the parameter to use, the parameter value to use? It's the thing that creates it. Who creates cities? The, the, the environment in Maine. So, so, so actually the population in Maine here. Um, so, so we go up to Maine, we go up Maine, and, um, and uh, we're going to go to the, the population here. And what we see here now is that there's a field under parameters called name, right? And we're going to use now that, that thing. So we're going to look up city names of index. Where did this index thing come from? It's one of these, uh, these sort of uh, contextually derived thing. If you put this thing over there, it says index, index of replicated city. So if this is city one, it's going to generate this thing from this, pull it from a distribution, pull this from a distribution, and it's going to look up, sorry, it's, yeah, city one will look up city names of one. Or city zero will do this, do this, look up city names of zero. If it's city number nine, it will do this, do this, look up city names of nine. Okay? Okay? Does that make sense to people? Okay, so, so ladies and gentlemen, um, let, us, let us compute. Um, so we just we just ran this, and there we go. And ladies and gentlemen, do do you see this? Who needs TA help? Show that the string okay, sure, sure, sorry. Um, okay, so go to so that string lives in Maine. It's under advanced, and it's this additional class code. And um, I'm going to, uh, ladies and gentlemen, can I remind you of something that's of, of considerable help when you use this software? Sometimes you want to double click on a tab to make it a full screen thing. I showed you that the first day, but it may be lost in the mists of time. You see that? Double click on it. And, and this is what it should have been, something like this. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. So let me let me undouble click that. Okay, so double clicked it again. Okay, so when we're who assigns the names? Main does. Um, so we go up Main, and then we 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 click on on people. Oh, sorry. What am I doing? I'm in the wrong Main. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. Here, let's uh, let's close these these guys up because um, I don't I don't like having them around. Thank you. Um, uh, Okay, um, so uh, boom, boom. Okay, so here, here I am in Maine, and um, I did this. Yeah, and this index is just sort of the index of the current city. Okay, okay. Uh, people need help. TA help. TA help. TA help. Deploy front row center. Okay, other TA help. Okay. Um, okay, and um, we uh, we can then run this thing. So 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 uh, this is being asked about um, uh, you know in the city's population. There's this new parameter, and you got to fill it in city names of this. So if if index is nine, city names will look up city names of nine in that array. And city names of line uh, nine is what? What is the last element of that array? 
Moose Lick McGuntick, and it will use that as the, the city name. Okay, and, and we're gonna run the simulation here, um, and, and we're gonna run it, and what do we see in front of us? Okay, so we're go, gonna do cities uh, from one to nine. We go down, there they are. Do you see them arrayed before you? Okay, so there's Portland, there's Bangor, there's Brunswick, Augusta, Bar Harbor, Booth Bay Harbor, Des Mount Desert Island, Belfast, Kitty Bunkport, and finally, and not least, Moose, Moose Lick and Uguntic. Um, so, uh, so, so there it is. Um, and it's, it, yeah, it's, it has a substantial population. Um, okay, um, so that's, uh, that's good. Um, uh, and that, that I think will, um, that's just a, another element. Now, um, in my, in, in the examples in the notes, I further extend this model with infection spread and with people moving between cities and it gets quite interesting because the infection is brought by people who are infected from one city to the other. And if you start to have the moving in response to infection pressure, like if they were moving away from a city because they feared getting infected, particularly if there's an, uh, an exposed interval where they don't know they're infected, they see people around them infective, infective with symptoms and they move and they carry it in an uh, you know, um, asymptomatic fashion and exposed and then develop it in the new city, that can be a very effective agent for spreading, spreading illness. Um, and, and then we do a bunch, we do some experiments here um, for, for sort of spread. Um, so if you go through that in more detail, you'll find lots of additional things to chew on. So are there any questions about what we've just done? Because it, it kind of salient, it summarizes the salient features um, of the uh, of the model for you. So, um, excuse me, it was um, file uh, where? Gosh, that's interesting. Oh, we have to select this. Of course. File um, oop, 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 create documentation. <laughs> there, there we go. I wasn't sure where it was. Um, uh, so, so uh, create documentation for the model, and that will that will you know help help summarize a lot of the features. But you, you do get a, a pretty quick sense of, okay, it can only be in, in a couple of places realistically, in most cases, and, and it has much, as much to do with your conventions for doing things as anything else. But it's true, things get scattered around. Um, on the other hand, I, I do find it easier than working with 90, you know, 75 repass files um, in Java code, you know, scattered around and not knowing quite where to look for them. So I don't know, you know, um, this is uh, the best possible way. I personally think this could be approved in, along some angles, but I think, um, you know, may not, not, not be too bad in terms of kind of compared to what's possible. What's the text mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So what is this thing? Can anyone tell me? What, what is this thing up here? Oops, this thing that says TXT? Yeah, to the name, right? 
according to the person's name. Um, so uh, so to be clear, we inserted that at the city level to, to, to label them. And remember we gave it, we said dynamically it's bound to this dot name here. See that? And then that's part of the representation visually of the city. So when we look up at Maine, remember this shows kind of a representation of the city. Good question. Um, you can assign the locations, like if, if you want to do it manually. I'm not aware that there's any built-in option for saying, like, you know, uh, D, D scatter, you know, somehow, somehow make it history dependent, like which ones come before, check them first, and then and do so. Because right now it's kind of a memoryless thing. It just kind of scatters them, just like. teams um, right now and then we're going to have our Java tutorials but um, because I do need to meet with the teams um, I um, what I'm going to do is to ask others to uh,